What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. <sighs> the air conditioning is fixed. Yes! <laughs> it's cool in the booth. It's cool outside, but it's, it's cool in the booth. It's, uh, it's late, and it's nice and cool outside, but it was hot before, boy. Feels okay now, though. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I don't mind sweating in the booth, but man, I was sweating in the booth. Anyway. I want to I want to stop for one second and I want to um, just bring it in. Let's let's talk. I want to say thanks. I haven't been saying it enough recently. I want to say thank you to everybody who watches this channel. I'm really super grateful for it. It's it's um it's really really rewarding to know that there are people who uh, enjoy what I'm doing here. I never expected it. I I really uh I I'm really I'm really grateful to you everyone who watches these videos and and finds benefit from them and communicates with me and teaches me things and, and all of that. I'm really super grateful for it. And, and also, I want to expend, uh, extend really a, a very special thank you to all of the people who trust in me enough, uh, in, an internet stranger, to send me expensive pieces of equipment and share them with me and let me borrow them for several weeks at a time so that I can make videos about them and share them with you, the, the viewers. To everybody who, who sends microphones to me, interfaces to me and, and all that stuff. Really, I'm just super grateful for it. And yes, companies that do it, it, that's great. I'm really grateful for it. But just other voice actors, other people with microphones sending me their personal stuff that I that I return to them. Really, I'm humbled. It's it's really, it's, it's incredibly rewarding. And uh, you're all incredibly generous. So I just want to say that right off the bat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. So... What do we have in the booth today, Mike? Because you've got two microphones here, and I do, and I have this one on loan from a fellow booth junkie who decided to share his Rode Broadcaster with me. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. I've never used a Rode Broadcaster before, and I've gotten to record a little bit with it, got to test it out, and I thought I'd share it with you, and I have it up against, for a point of comparison, my Shure SM7B. Why do I have these two microphones to compare to each other? A few reasons. A few reasons. And let's let's just, we'll go back and forth. We'll compare them. We'll see how they sound. We'll see which ones you like better. And we'll talk about some of the features and specifications and help you decide if any of these are right for you. So first, why am I comparing these two is, well, they're really close from a price point perspective. Three, $399, 420 for all intents and purposes, it's the same, the same price, 400-ish bucks, depending on the day. The prices go up and down, but the sure the 7B uh, tends to hover around 400 bucks the road broadcaster about 420 these are both broadcast mics broadcaster in the name the SM7B you'll see in radio stations you'll see in podcasts all the time but they're different kinds of microphones even though they look somewhat similar they're oriented somewhat similar they have a similar um, uh, 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 target usage broadcast podcast type type situation they're kind of different mics they're kind of different mics and we'll uh we'll go back and forth so you can hear the difference because i don't think these sound too too alike I, they're they're similar but they're not too alike like it doesn't sound like uh totally phasing uh, phase cancellation in my head so they do sound they do sound somewhat different let's talk about how they're similar in in the beginning first they both have the same pattern they're both cardioid microphones cardioid means they're sensitive from the front and very insensitive from the back. So if you're doing something like a podcast where you're doing an interview type show, the cardioid pattern can be really good for that because they're really insensitive from the back. So if you orient these two microphones like this, you put the butts of them together facing each other, so you'd be facing the other interviewee, um, the, you, the, the, uh, the other person's voice won't end up in your microphone too much unless it bounces off this wall and comes into your microphone. Thus, acoustic treatment behind me. So, because we don't want that reflection coming in. Cardioid pattern can be really good for that. So, when you're conducting an interview with somebody, you can look them right in the eye, and they can talk. They won't end up in your mic. You can talk. You won't end up in their mic because of the pattern. Cardioid pattern. Super cool. Very nice. Um, they both have very similar frequency responses. The The broadcaster has a little bit wider. It says 20 to 20,000, uh, and I think this one is a little bit less. Maybe it goes down to 50 so they both have the same a similar uh, upper range, but this one has a little bit better, a tiny bit better bass response. Really inconsequential below 50 hertz for a voice actor. There's not much down there. 
and they both have switches to roll off anything lower than that uh, to because you don't want rumble and you don't want you know trucks going by and you don't want the furnace and you don't want floor rumble and you don't want ambient noise getting in there so a lot of times the microphones will cut that out power wise these are different. Oh, and the other thing I should say from a similarity perspective, they're both end address. So even though the podcaster, I'm sorry, the broadcaster looks a lot like uh, some of the other Rode side address microphones like the, uh, the NT1, it's got a similar sort of look to it. Um, this is an end address. You actually talk into the end of it. Same with the 7B. They're not made to go, you don't talk into them like this. Or, you know, like this, some people, you see them, they, they orient it like that. They're not like that at all. You talk into the end of them, much like you'd think of, like a handheld microphone. They're end address. Okay. They are dissimilar. Make sure I get these set up right. These are dissimilar in that this is a dynamic microphone and this is a condenser microphone. So the 7B does not require external power to be applied to the microphone. It's uh, dynamic, which means it tends to be quieter and less sensitive in that you have to turn your preamplifier up higher. This one, the broadcaster, does use phantom power. You can turn it, you turn it on in order, just like uh, a lot of other condenser microphones. On the, road, on the road website, it says that this is a pressure gradient microphone. And normally you'd see uh, a condenser or a dynamic or anything. For all intents and purposes, condenser. But I think it's the it's the way they have the diaphragms oriented to make it a cardioid pattern that they're calling it a pressure gradient. Physics, we don't care, uh, but it's, a, it's what they're calling a pressure gradient. But for our purposes, it's similar to any other condenser microphone. It requires phantom power. Cool. They both have some switches on them. On the back of the shore, there are two switches. They're sliders uh, that allow you to either uh, add bass response, so you can sort of increase the bassiness of the microphone. And there's a pres. Um, is that right? Is it a bass boost? Wait a minute. Totally had it wrong. Totally wrong. It's not a bass boost. It's a bass roll-off, right? I said that earlier. It's a bass roll-off. All of a sudden, it's like, why does that sound weird in my head? They both have bass roll-off switches to uh, take away that rumble, that ambient noise. The SM7B has another switch on the back that is a presence boost. So you can brighten up the microphone. Because I do find that the 7B in flat mode does tend to sound a little bit on the dark side. Um, uh, it's not as as bright. It's not as not as trebly. It's uh, how how do you describe it? To you'll you'll hear the difference between these two. This microphone will sound brighter, more airy. There's more treble in it. Whereas I think the Seven B should sound. Sometimes it can sound veiled. It almost sounds like there's you know, there's a little veil over the microphone, so it sounds more um, more muted. But you can adjust that. This one, it's just the bass boost. Interestingly, they both, let's talk about the proximity effect, because normally you'd, you'd roll off the bass to take away the proximity effect, but the Rode Broadcaster specifically says it enhances the proximity effect. And so this is something that I think you'd see, you know, boss jocks, you'd see radio guys, when they're using these microphones, they tend to get right up on them, right? So they start to chew on these microphones. And the Rode Broadcaster specifically says it enhances the proximity effect, not something we see a lot in microphones where they say, we make it louder, we make it, we enhance the proximity effect. And the broadcaster says it enhances the proximity effect. So when you're right up into it, when you're chewing on that microphone, you got your lips right up against the grill, it will sound very present. And then there's a switch on the back that you can flip to take some of the bassiness away. So I flip that switch down and you can see some of that bassiness goes away, even though I'm right up on that mic. But when you, when you, when you flip it back into the neutral position, you can get right up on there. You can get right up on there and really bring out the, uh, the gravitas in your voice. The 7B also allows you to get right up into that microphone. Sounds really clean, really clear, but doesn't, um, I, I think the overall sound of that mic is, is very rich and bassy, but it doesn't get more pronounced as you get close to it. It seems to not have the quite as much proximity effect to it as 
The Broadcaster. The Broadcaster. For me, I like the way that Broadcaster sounds. I think I might like it better than the 7B. I might have to listen to it a little bit more. But my initial reactions were, oh, yeah, that's creamy. That's nice. That's really, that sounds, that sounds good, especially for, you know, an end address broadcast microphone. One other thing about the Broadcaster that I think is a really handy feature is it has an indicator light on it. I'm going to turn it around so that you can see it. See right there? There's an indicator light on it. What does that indicator light mean? Well, if you're in a radio station type situation and you've got an engineer on the other side of the glass and you're talking into the microphone, the indicator light means the mic is hot. You see the light? People are going to hear you. When the light goes off, like an engineer mutes you, you can he can actually configure it uh, via the phantom power to take the light away. So when the light is on, the mic is hot. These other microphones you tend to forget and you don't see that it's on. So there's always this little indicator in the microphone that this mic is hot. And the engineer, uh, if he's got it on his control panel, he can like mute the mic and it will take the light away. Cuts phantom power and it takes the light away. How cool is that? So if you have a podcast and you have a guest, if the light's on, the mic's hot, you're being recorded, it's on the record. That sort of thing. What else is there? Oh, I know the last thing that I want to say about it. The thing about the 7B that you'll always hear people talk. I mean, it's this, you, you say, the 7B sounds great, but it requires a lot of gain. What does that mean? If it requires a lot of gain, that means your preamplifier has to be turned all the way up. You got to give it the beans, right? You got to be turning that preamplifier all the way up. And unless you have really high quality preamps, two things may occur. One, it may not supply enough gain. It just won't be able to extract as much signal from the microphone into your, into your computer as it could. Gain is similar to volume. Gain is how, uh, how big the signal is as it gets into disk. Volume is how big the signal is when it comes out your speakers, how much room, how, much, how big the sphere is that you could hear. Anyway, gain is how it goes into, into the computer. Volume is how I, that, how I think of it as how it comes, comes out. Uh, gain actually adjusts how much signal there is on the, on the recording. Permanent. Anyway, so the, the 7B requires a lot of gain. Like it really wants more than 60 dB of gain. It wants 70, 72 dB of gain. And a lot of times your prosumer uh, preamplifiers can't give it that much. And so what a lot of people end up having to do is they add yet another piece to the signal that is a cloud lifter, a fed head, a DBX 286 thing, a piece of equipment like that. And I've got videos on all those things. If you don't know what they are, uh, in order to get enough gain to have a good workable signal on disc case in point on my preamp, it's turned all the way up. It's at like 99 and a half percent. And that does introduce the ever so slightest bit of extra noise on the seven B's channel because my preamplifier is all the way up. Now, on the other hand, because this one's using phantom power, I always find that phantom power microphones don't have to be turned up as loud. In order to get the signals to be about the same, my preamp channel for this one is set at like 60% of maximum. It's just lazily doing its thing, which means it has the opportunity to be really quiet. The only noise you'd hear is the noise that's inherent in the microphone. And when I, very little, but the SM7B's channel has a little bit more because it's, it's all the way up. And that's not how I normally like to run my preamp, but I wanted to have an apples to apples mic comparison. Let me get a pencil real quick. Because I think people are going to ask, I do want to talk a little bit in the microphone with the presence uh, boost engaged. So just for a point of comparison, I think that really, I think that the, uh, the uh, presence boost switch doesn't necessarily change the sound for the better on the 7B. I don't typically engage it. I think it sounds better, a little bit darker, but you should hear now that the 7B does get brighter. There's a certain oomph to the presence of that microphone. It's got more treble. In it. It's actually more mid-range, but there's more treble in it. That makes it sound a little bit brighter. Uh, and for me, I'll, I do hear a difference in my head. Now, the question will be, 
Does it sound better than it did before? Do you like it? It's up to you. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to engage the bass roll-off on both of these microphones, just so you can get a comparison of that situation, too. I will say it's much easier, much easier on the road. It's just a little switch. Whereas with the 7B, you see, you gotta, uh, you gotta stick a pencil in and like, or a pen and slide these little sliders. So now I have this present bo presence boosted and bass rolled off. You can should be able to see, you can see how it sort of shows the EQ curve of that microphone. A little bit different, but that's the way the the 7B has always done it, and it's. Set it and forget it, really, because um, I don't have it installed. But there's also a metal plate that you can do to cover that. So it's not visible what those settings are at all. So you don't want your guests messing with it or anything like that. You can actually cover it up with a plate. But now, I think these two, this is probably is going to be as close as they could sound to being sounding alike, where the presence boost is engaged. It's naturally occurring in the broadcaster. They both have the bass roll off, so they're not going to be as... Uh, subjected to the proximity effect. So when you're right up on there, it doesn't sound particularly bassy in my head, um, but should sound like I'm right up in your ear, just right there, just right up in your ear. And that's nice for, uh, you know, nice for radio, for podcasting, uh, where you say, just say to your guests, just put your lips right up on that mic, just get right up on there and talk like you talk and forget it's there, but get nice and close to it. That way you've got nice, rich, hot signal going into your, into your DAW. So there you have it. That's what I got for you today. The Rode Broadcaster and the Shure SM7B. That's what I have for you today. I hope that helps. If you were looking at one of these two microphones, I think they're both really excellent choices. They're both really excellent choices, depending on what you're looking for in, in a microphone, either visually or feature-wise or sound quality. These are, you're not going to go wrong with either one of these. It comes down to just your personal preference. I hope that helps. Now... Go get yourself a microphone, maybe a condenser, maybe a, uh, a dynamic, maybe an end address, maybe some other mic, like a shotgun or something. But get yourself a microphone, would you? And go get into a booth, a booth that you made, any kind of booth. Even if that booth is your bedroom, just go get in a booth and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.